Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I am so privileged to say that we have Wendy Newman with us today. Welcome, Wendy. Robert, thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. So I'm going to introduce Wendy to you guys so that you know who she is and thank you so much for joining us. Wendy Newman is a media celebrated author and a dating, sex, and relationship expert who led hundreds of workshops and has um, helped over 50,000 women internationally. That's a huge number. Yep. Her book, 121 First Dates, How to Succeed at Online Dating, Fall in Love, and Live Happily Ever After, really is part juicy tell-all, part anti-rules dating guide. It's been option opinioned. Option? Sorry. It's been optioned for a Hollywood film. Woo. And is getting love from the Wall Street Journal, Chicago Tribune, Washington Post, Glamour, Self, Huffington, Post, Access Hollywood, and more. And she has also done a lot of research and very knowledgeable about how men think in the dating and relationship world. Welcome, Wendy. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Sorry about my stumbling. No problem. So we're going to focus today on how men think in dating and relationships. So, Wendy, share your knowledge. <laughs> well, I have a lot to say about how we do things differently and we expect men to be just like us. And we're quite frustrated when they're not. How I think, back me up on this, we tend to think that men take longer to commit than a woman might. Do you think that? Or do you think men are diving in with commitment? I do think they take a little longer than we do because we think emotionally and I think that's what triggers us to commit quicker in a relationship. Yeah, and I'd like to talk about why it takes a man longer so we can understand it. But I also think I probably want to start with the mistakes we make if we're dating online in the misperception of point of view, right? We'll, we'll make up that a man isn't interested in committing or he's just out there for fun or why is it that we put so much heart and attention to our profile and guys just aren't doing that. So I wanna talk a little bit about that first and then we'll talk about why it takes them longer to commit. To commit. Is that okay? Absolutely. Okay, great. So. It's true, men don't put any effort like we do. If you're just blanket generalizing like crazy, they don't put any effort in. You know, you've seen those pictures. <laughs> you've seen those terrible photos and we're painstakingly getting the perfect photos and we're painstakingly writing our profile and they're like, I'm looking for uh, someone I enjoy at coffee. You're like, really? Right, someone I can enjoy my life with. Well, that gave me nothing, right? And part of the problem isn't that they're not deep, isn't that they don't care, isn't that they're just out there for fun. The problem is our perception of what they think online dating is and what we think online dating is. And men tend to look at online dating as a place to connect to somebody they can't meet in the real world and the ability to find someone cute or intelligent or a good like sparky match for them who they know it's not real they know nothing is real until you're face to face at the coffee shop or the wine bar. And so they're not gonna put any time and effort into something that isn't real. What he's looking for is, I'm looking for a person who on the face of it looks pretty great, but I wanna see if I wanna spend 10 minutes with her. That's where they start. Am I willing to spend 10 minutes with this one? in a meet and greet or a half an hour, or whatever, right? The first meet and greet date. So they are taking dating one baby step at a time. Who is this interesting person? Do I want to hang out with her for a minute? That's it. Is she cute? 
hopefully she's not too over the top. Right? <laughs> so that's it. That's the only thing they're looking for online where we bring our whole hope chest of dreams. <laughs> we bring everything to that profile and our instincts are driving this. Our instincts are telling us we have to come off as a really great wife or partner package. We're going to talk about how we're nurturing and how friends and family are the most important things and what we love to cook and how nurturing we are. And, and by the way, we're nurturing and we love to hike and dance and do all the things and walk on the beach, but we're also very nurturing. And then I'm looking for, and we put the entire kitchen sink, everything ever needed. He has to be honest and open and a man of integrity. Like the liars wouldn't just say they were honest and open. <laughs> like we put those painstaking details in there. Like our life depends on it or we'll get the wrong one coming our way. Right. Yeah. No. We, we don't look at it like, is this an interesting person that I want to spend 10 minutes with? We look at it like, I have got to have my partner now. And so I'm going to do everything I can to attract and to blockade the guys who aren't it. And we need to be a little bit more like guys in this space. What we're doing, I mean, it's like talking about a prenup on a first date. We're putting the cart before the horse. And so when a guy looks at it, he's like, whoa, wow, that's, that's intense. That package that she's rolling out to 25 million strangers kind of shows, depending on what's in there, could be a lack of good judgment, right? It's like talking about a prenup on a first date, too much, too soon. Or talking about what he's really interested on a first date, sex, too soon. <laughs> or, you know, not if you want sex on a first date, no judgment over here. So... <laughs> So that's what's going on for us is we're misunderstanding where they're coming from. They're coming from, do I want to spend five minutes with this interesting person? And whoa, she's telling me that she only wants to date somebody she can marry in the next nine months. And oh, too intense. I'm out. I'm not. Mm -mm. Wow. Yeah, I, I definitely um, have experienced what you're speaking about. Um, I remember when I first started online dating and how detailed my profile was. Mm -hmm. And once I stepped back, worked with my dating coach, we revamped my profile, of course, and of course the pictures too. Um, and yeah, I mean, it really, it, it really changed the whole dynamic of my profile and approach with online dating. And I do recall when I first started how desperate I appeared, how like do the prenup at the first meet kind of behavior and how that scared a lot of guys away. And I wasn't understanding it at first, but yeah. And, and by the time I got to where I was a year ago, a little over a year ago, when I met my boyfriend, um, yeah, I took a whole different approach about it. And I was more that like, just whatever, you know, not, not whatever, like I'll take whatever, but like, um, I'll put out a few words. Let's see what fish bites kind of behavior yeah. and sort of that laid back. I'm okay to be alone if that's the way it's intended, even though I didn't believe that, but I was okay with it in that moment. So I took a more laid back approach. Yeah. So it's interesting. We do this painstaking profile writing, but I have to tell you a secret. There was a time about mm, up to about a year ago, I was working with women with revamping their profiles. I don't do that anymore, but I was doing that for a bit. And because I wanted access to their profiles and I didn't necessarily want to get their login every time, I created an OkCupid profile for myself. So I could just go on and see their handle and 
look at it from there. And I didn't want to be taken down. Um, so I posted a photograph and it was a photograph where you really couldn't see my face very well on purpose. It was sort of, you know, at a distance and it was a black and white. And, and I made it cute and sexy enough that they'd think it was a real person, right? Not a bot. And then I thought, well, I have to write something in the profile. So I wrote three words because I figured if I only wrote three words, no one would ever write to me. But what I wrote was, I am amazing. One photo, I am amazing. Do you know how much traction I got with I am amazing? And I'll tell you why. About, I mean, men were writing left and right. They're like, tell me what's amazing about you. That's fascinating. <laughs> like, who are you? What, how, you're very confident. What do you do? Like, they were in. And it was intriguing, right? And I, it cracked me up for the amount of hours collectively that we all have spent, you know. And don't get me wrong. I mean, here I'm talking like some expert, but you know how you get to be an expert? All those hours of trial and error. I wrote my profile like that too. Like you said, I wrote, I had to put everything, including the kitchen sink in mind to begin with too. So it wasn't until later that I sort of took course correct. But um Early, early on, it was about 12 years ago, Match.com did this thing. They did a science experiment on their users, like they do all the time. And they did this little science experiment where they took one photo of a really handsome man, and they wrote a profile, and then they took the exact same written profile and then put a really beautiful woman's head on it, right? And because you know, we're working in the workplace and moving and grooving the kind of the same now, they wrote it in a way it could have been either person. And they sent it out. And they were science experimenting what would happen. And then they followed up with people who had clicked on it and who had written and who didn't write and all the things, right? So they followed up with their users and they asked men, they sent it to men and said, would you reach out to her? And the men were like, oh yeah, definitely. She's intriguing. I want to know more. She's, yeah, she's, Good looking she seems interesting i i would absolutely reach out to her they asked the women would you reach out to this man or would you answer if he wrote to you every single woman said no nope nope uh he's hiding something um he's too vague there's something shifty about him wasn't the photo men need less words we need more. The profile was short. It was brief. It was to the point. And men are always hunting a point. They like, they love a bullet point. They like it clean and simple. They're willing to dive in and ask more. Right. Um, we overwhelm them. And then when they don't read the whole profile and they check out halfway through and ask us out and we're on a date with them and they ask about something that's in the lower half of the profile, then we're pissed. Right? No, he just, what? He saw you thought you were great, wanted to get to know you, didn't want to bother reading all the things. And I'm a writer and I write, my profile was so long, oh my God. I, and I never cleaned it up. I, I have taught women for years about shorter profiles and I, mine was terrible as a writer, mine was like super long. And I asked my husband, I said, did you read my profile? He's like, no, I got like, I don't know, two paragraphs and I was, I was good, we went out. <laughs> That's funny. My boyfriend said to me, he goes, when I saw it, he goes, I saw your profile a while ago. He goes, and I ballroom dance. So I had written that I love ballroom dancing. He goes, I figured I wasn't even a possibility because I don't ballroom dance. I don't even dance. Like he slow dances, but that's about it. Yeah. And I thought that is not a deal breaker for me. Yes. But he decided it was. So then when I put out the short hi there to profiles that I believe were real, and I believed his was, he had great pictures. Um, yeah, he responded. And that's how it started. So. Wow. So you reached out to your boyfriend. Yeah. I reached out to my husband. Look, 100% success stories. Hey, ladies who don't like reaching out. <laughs> You have to be assertive in the online dating world. Yeah, but you also have to build yourself up 
to be confident to not worry about whether they're going to respond or not. Correct. And that's part of the beginning process before you even get online because otherwise you're just going to feel unimportant, uncared about, all those negative things because people don't always reach out to you. Yeah, and if you're going to hang out and wait for somebody, your person, to reach out to you in the sea of 25 million people on that site, I mean, that would be like saying, you know, I really love food. I like to eat dinner, but I'm only going to eat at the restaurants that deliver to my house. Ew. Like, some of them are good and sneak through, but mostly no. Because people who are reaching out to you, like I said, a couple good ones sneak in. But it's usually double your age, half your age, the married guy from Miami who's going to fly you in for the weekend. I, no. no. <laughs> right. Or the friends with benefits guys. Yeah, the friends with benefits guys. Who's just like, how about you? How about you? What about you? <laughs> so, mm -hmm. yeah. Reach out, ladies. Yeah. And okay. So, okay. okay. I, I have a, yeah. One, so a lot of people are like, a lot of experts are like, you got to have the perfectly crafted, best foot forward. You only get the opportunity to make your first impression once. Online dating, all you have to do, and this is how you had just said it, Barbara, you don't, you've got to have the confidence to keep going when they don't write back. So since you're writing into the void that you may never hear from them again, and chances are you won't, it's a, it's a numbers game, right? The most important part is to balance being, you don't want to be shallow. You don't want to be so like, it's nothing that it doesn't matter. You want to put a little thought into it, read their profile, see what you like, talk about that, but short, keep it short. They like it short. And you're not investing much time into like making it perfect. And then that way you can send out that pretty good message that really all you're doing is providing this big wide invitation of saying, Hey, 25 million people on the site. How you doing? I'm here. I'm over here. I like you. think you're interesting. Come get me. And that way you're still, if you want him to pursue, you can. I never once in 121 first dates, I never once asked anybody out, ever. But I contacted probably 85% of the people I ever dated online. Yeah. Just very light, tap, tap, tap. Here I am. I like this about you. Come get me. Yeah. I think that was one of the things I finally developed you know, that kind of approach. And um, yeah, that's a good question. Who did I ask people out? I probably said, well, can we meet? Yeah. That was probably how I approached that. Yeah. But I wanted to be asked out. Yeah. And I mean, there were, there were people I communicated with for over a month. And, and I kept saying, I really would like to meet you. And they never did. They never followed through. Yep. And, and then there were the people that just sort of dropped off and went, never responded, uh, even after a little bit of communication. And then there were the people that I did meet. And once you actually met them face to face, you know, there was not much there or there was, and they weren't interested in me. So, yeah. In, you just have that, all that trial and error because again, you just don't know. And it's like, people will say, well, put yourself out there, go to events, go do meetup, walk through the hardware store, all dressed up, you know, those kinds of things. And, and yeah, those can be helpful. And I know people that have met people in those realms, but again, you, you have to just do it and put yourself out there. Otherwise, you may as well just sit on the couch and watch TV. Yeah, and let's meet is very different than how about 7.30 on Friday, you know, at, at the such and such club or whatever. And let's meet is something that we have to do or wouldn't it be fun to meet or something like that because of two reasons. One, the ones that will carry it on and on and on who, ha who never have any intention of meeting you because they're not who they say they are. Or the, you have to say let's meet because he does want to meet, but 
the last two women he said, let's meet, they freaked out because they didn't get to vet him long enough because they wanted to wait 10 emails or something. I don't know. So they have to deal with the rejection of women trying to vet online, which is a mistake, by the way. Um, meeting right away is the smartest thing to do. And when they ask women for that, some women panic. So your friendly invitation can extend to, wouldn't it be fun to meet? Hey, let's meet. This is like, come on now. One more time, let's meet. Oh, oh no, you're just going to keep writing and asking me questions? Okay, well, I'm out. Yeah. So what would you advise? So a woman communicates with a gentleman online and he, finally, he asks her out, so they set up a meet at Starbucks or whatever, um, and they get there. How, sh how should she anticipate or how might he anticipate that meeting? Well, it's a meet and greet and you're meeting a stranger. So if you show up on time and you show up as yourself, representing who you actually are, instead of trying to figure out who you think they want you to be and then be that, because that's what our instinct does. Our instinct is like, okay, I gotta attract this one. What, who do I need to be? <laughs> Being yourself is like the last thing that your instincts will ever tell you to do. So if you can power through your own instinct and have a victory over human spirit and be yourself and be on time and just show up and, and, and have that date, you have won the game, no matter who likes who and if the timing is right. And I mean, there's just three parts. There is, do you like him or, or her? Do they like you? And is the timing right? Is it not insurmountable? Right. So those are basically the three things you have to look for. And you can't predict that. You can't predict that until you meet. That's true. Okay, so they meet. They like each other. He asks her out for a second date. Yes. Or a second meeting. So you should go back to his house and have sex with him. <laughs> I don't know the answer to what they, they should do together. There's no formula that works for this. I mean, there are a ton of people who will tell you the rule that you have to follow to have it turn out and live happily ever after. But no, no, you want to do the thing that's authentic for you to do. Sorry about the sex thing. <laughs> oh, no, that was funny. <laughs> You want to do the thing that's right for you. You want to do the thing that has you feel seen and safe and in good shape and, you know, be a safe dater and, and do the thing that makes the most sense to you, whether that's another coffee date or a dinner or a walk in the park or lunch or drinks or whatever, whatever you want to do. Um, yeah, so let me re rephrase. <laughs> Did I answer a different question. No, no, no. Maybe I'm sure I didn't ask it properly. Mm -hmm. So let's say you both like each other and you start dating and so forth. Now, you know, we talked about how women tend to um, become more emotionally attached quicker than the gentlemen do. So as a woman, knowing that men think differently than we do and, and respond differently than we do, um, what advice would you give the lady? And then what advice would you give the gentleman, because hopefully there are gentlemen watching us today, um, about the beginning stages of building a relationship together? So there you go. Thank you. <laughs> I think that for both men and women, the most important thing for relationship building is to pay attention to, am I being myself? And do I like myself with this person? And is he or she seeing who I am easily? Or am I misunderstood a lot? Am I having to kind of re-clarify who I am? Are they just not really getting who I am, right? So for both men and women, you want to look at is this easy breezy? And can I naturally want to be myself with you? Am I funny with you like I'm funny with my best friend? 
am I willing to tell you that really embarrassing story or is that just too much of a risk? And I, I can't speak for men about this, but I know for me and for a lot of women, if he is super amazing, I mean like off the charts amazing, he's 10 and he looks great on paper and oh man, your lifestyle is going to be amazing. We will sell ourselves out so fast and the opportunity, this big 10 on a scale of 10 opportunity is so big, we'll do anything to not lose it, including not being ourselves. When we are so freaked out about this one, that is never good news. When you're super freaked out, it's not, it's not a good sign. It's <laughs> I have really bad news for you. I'm sorry probably not going to turn out. And mostly because you won't be able to be yourself with him and he'll feel it. He'll be like, I need to find out what she needs so I can see if I can be a match for her. But she, she's being needless right now. Weird. Okay. Well, she's not letting me in. So I don't know what to do with that. We have to be willing to say who we are and what we're up to and what makes us happy and what our life is like. And what we're hoping for a partner to provide and what we're hoping to provide for a partner. And these are types of conversations that you need to be comfortable with the person to actually have authentically. That is true. I would say that there were, there have been things that I've experienced where um, being truly authentic, being totally open, because I'm pretty much an open book kind of person, would, would have been very uncomfortable and not everybody was open, receptive, and open themselves. Yeah. But when I found someone that was feeling authentic, feeling open-hearted, on their part and being generous. It was, it was empowering to me and made me comfortable enough to be authentic, to op be open, to be vulnerable. And that is, those were some of the things that drew me to um, my boyfriend, because even before we met, and we met pretty quickly, he did everything the way I believed it should flow. He, I saw how generous he was. He was telling me about things that he was doing for his family and how close he has is to his family, and he's got a big family. Um, and to me, that speaks volumes because you know, you talk to different people and they're, you know, they don't talk to this sibling or they don't engage with their children or, they, you know, their parents are still alive and they don't get along with their parents or that kind of stuff. That, that to me, that speaks about their lack of commitment and connection to people that should be important in their lives. Yes, we don't have choices in who we pick, as our family members, and yeah, they can be difficult, but people with an open heart and generous tend to have good relationships with their family in spite of their shortcomings. Yeah, and you really talked about how he came to you open hearted, which made you lean in, you know, and that's one of the things. If you're on a date and you're feeling like they're not opening up, you could sort of science experiment it out without telling them and go ahead and pretend that they're being open hearted and go ahead and lean in a little and become more and see if they get, you know, if they back off, off even further, that just gave you plenty of information. But if it has them lean in a little bit more too, then you now have a more intimate moment, a more real moment together. And right. I like to stay away from the, interview questions of, you know, how many people does he manage and how long have you worked at Apple and, you know, all the digging questions to get to the things we can't really ask that we want to know, see if they're qualified to live with us. So <laughs> I live in San Francisco. It is 
so hard to stay above water here. It's not that we're gold diggers. We just need to make sure that we don't have dead weight. <laughs> we will drown. So there were things that we had to know, like, could I be with this person and still exist in this cutthroat market we live in? And that's all fine and dandy. And you're going to find that out fairly quickly enough. You could even probably find it out on your first date if you want to, but I'd rather you find that information out by asking a different question. And those are questions like, what do you love about your life? And who's your favorite underdog and why? And what do you got planned this summer? I mean, if you ask somebody what they love about their life and they say nothing, they've just given you some quality information <laughs> about who they are, right? So... That way you're not digging. And if you just ask that open-ended question, that's another little science experiment that you can have. I was always having like my own private science experiments on date, dates, right? So if you ask a question like, what do you love about your life? That can be really deep or it can be really shallow. And I didn't judge them on shallow answers because they might be nervous, but I did know like what, it, how much of this conversation are they willing to carry? and then ask a different question and engage in different ways. Uh, are they doing better yet? <laughs> They're not doing so great, right? So I would play with them in a way to give them the opportunity to show me who they were, both in what they talked about and how open they were about doing some of the work to be on that date with me. Yeah, absolutely. Those are some great points and um... I mean, I think you've given us a lot of insight into the dynamics of how men might think, how women need to engage with them in order to understand dealing with the online profile stuff and, and so forth. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Yes, I promised them that I would tell them about why it takes men longer to commit. So I want to make good on my promise. Now, when we, and you got to back me up on this or say that's not true. Go ahead and tell me it's not true if it's not true. But when we, um, when we find somebody that we really like, like, oh yeah, this one, this, this one, I'm going to attract him. I'm going to get him. I'm going to win the prize, right? So we set out to attract this person that we have our eye on and he looks good and he's charming and funny and you like him and you like yourself with him and he says, let's, let's start dating. And you're now setting out to commit. So you want to win the prize, win the prize, win the prize, win the prize. And then we win the prize. And then we have the prize. And then we look at the prize and then we're like, oh yeah, definitely have to change the way he dresses. Right? <laughs> so we got to, oh, the way, oh no, he can't, no, that, we got to fix that, that thing too, the way he talked to the person there. Right. So, so we'll start to pick at the things that we're going to change about the prize that we just won. We like to change men. It doesn't work, by the way. <laughs> you haven't lived on the planet long enough to know it doesn't work. It, it doesn't work. I'm here to tell you it doesn't work. So a man for the, and I'm again, generalizing like crazy. There are obviously women who don't do this and there are men who don't do what I'm about to say, but in general, men take much longer to commit because they're not out to change the prize they're winning. They're looking at the whole thing. They're looking at the whole package, the whole, she's amazing. God, did she laugh loud. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, she's telling that 26 year old she hasn't seen her since she was three. That's kind of cringeworthy. Okay, uh, all right, well, can I accept you? I can accept that. Yeah, I don't need to change that about her. Yeah, I'll just let her do her, right? And so, all of the time he's dating, he's looking at all the parts of us to see, can I accept the whole package? And then when they commit to the whole package and they have nothing to change and they're standing at that party and their friend says, God, did you have a laugh on her? He's like, yeah, but that's Nancy. Isn't she great? Like, they just don't, they don't have that need to change us the way we do. They think it's rude. <laughs> and that's why it takes them longer to commit. And they're also, they're very smart about making sure that things are lining up, that can he commit to making her happy? How many times have you heard a woman say to a man, 
I'm leaving you and you deserve to, to be with someone who makes you happy. That's not a woman phrase. That's a man phrase. You deserve to be with someone who can make you happy. Men say that. And so men are looking at, can I provide what's needed? And do I have a shot at making her happy for the long haul? Because if I don't, I'm out. I can't. I, she's amazing. I wish I could. Oh, man, she's a 10 to me. I wish I could, but I, I'm never going to make her happy. So not committing. So they're wow. looking at all kinds of things. Yeah, that's great. I mean, you've definitely touched on some very significant um, points, and I really appreciate that. No, thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> Wendy, do you have a gift for our audience today? I do. It's really fun. It's a 30 day love breakthrough challenge. And I know women are busy and I know you don't need another 30 minute journaling exercise to add to your already yoga practice and 30 day minute journaling exercises and all the things that you have to do before you get yourself to work. This is five minutes, count them five minutes a day. So I send an email every day for 30 days and it's a little question or it's a thought, or I want your answer for, or whatever it is, a journaling exercise, nothing will take more than five minutes. And after the 30 days, if you've spent five, win five minutes with me for 30 days, you're gonna, you're gonna have such a breakthrough in who you are, what you're looking for, what you know about yourself, what the blocks have been, all of it. That's very generous, thank you. <clears throat> I'm sure our audience will take advantage of that. Thank you very much. You Wendy, it's been a pleasure. I thank you so much for your knowledge and information. And I know that it certainly touched me and hit on points that I could relate to. And I'm, I'm sure it has also with our audience. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on, Barbara. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs>